Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and my bug is almost done. It, there's a little bit left to do, but I thought I'd go ahead and show it to you now because <laughs> well, it's going to take another day uh, just to put some epoxy sculpt on the connections for the wings, make sure that they're really stuck on good. Right now, I've just got some hot glue on there, and then I need to paint uh, this area here so that it matches the rest of the bug. One more day, and I. <laughs> But it's kind of gone on long enough. I just wanted to let you guys know that I really did finish the bug, almost. And um, he's very, very close to being done. He did come out kind of cute, though. He's got really nice wings, I think. I think they're great. Uh, aside from the fact that this part here doesn't quite meld into the rest of the mask quite yet. Like I said, it needs to be painted and it needs to have some epoxy sculpt on there just to make sure that it's going to stay where it belongs. If you've been watching these videos, you know that it started out just being a face mask, and then I decided no, it, it should really be a um, like a helmet to go over the the rest of the head, as long as I was going to be adding the wings. And then I decided no, that's not quite big enough. I'm going to make the back end too, and so so eventually the whole thing ended up being created with some plaster cloth on the front, and then the uh, aluminum foil on the back was covered with some uh, some paper mache clay that went over the whole the whole mask. Um, didn't have the legs yet, of course. And the paper mache clay was on there, basically on the front to cover the the fabric texture of the plaster cloth, and then it covered the foil on the back. So that turned out quite okay. I, it was white, and so as soon as it dried, I spray painted the inside with gray. This is what he looks like on the inside. And I painted the outside with a spray paint of black. So <laughs> I don't usually use spray paint for anything, but I had some out in the garage, so I went ahead and used it. Then I made these legs. It's just a wire in there. And then I used some aluminum foil, covered it with epoxy sculpt. And once that was done, I temporarily attached them with some hot glue and then used some more epoxy sculpt around uh, the, the connections. I didn't want any wires at all on the inside. As you can see, there aren't any except for the one, whoops, these whiskers. Do this is all one wire, it went in, across, and then back out again, and that's held on very firmly with some epoxy scope. If I were going to let a child wear this, I would not have put those whiskers on there. You could easily hurt somebody really bad, maybe even poke out somebody's eye if you were just messing around like kids do. So those those are not really safe. That wire is too sharp. But I'm not going to wear it, so I thought it would be kind of fun to have them, just because cicadas have whiskers, <laughs> and I didn't know that before I started looking at it, and they're really, really close. He, he does have whiskers. They're kind of cute. Um, so then, after that was done, and I spray painted the legs, too. Try to get him to stay here. There we go. Then I used a little bit of... Uh, goldish looking paint uh, just to make a couple of the uh, patterns that he's got on his head. Didn't spend a lot of time on it because I was kind of wondering what the heck am I doing by that time? <laughs> this, this is uh, took a lot longer than it should have. That's why I'm kind of rushing through this. I took a whole lot of video during this whole process but um, I just want to kind of get this one over with so that I can go make something else. The wings were what I was really looking forward to, and I really liked the way they came out. I think that because the plastic is kind of crumpled up, it's really going to catch the light really pretty. Uh, they're not on in exactly the right place because these legs aren't in the right place. They, on a real bug, I don't know if you can see this or not. No, I'm sure you can't. But on the real bug, the legs kind of uh, come out of a center line right down the bottom of his abdomen. And these obviously can't do that because that would be right in the middle of the human's head. So they had to be stuck on the outside and that changed where the wings could go. So it's not realistic entirely, 
but I think it's close enough. Now the, the wings themselves were made out of the uh, report covers. I crumpled them up to make them look uh, more realistic so it could have the little flashing lights coming off of the, the bumps and dips on the plastic. I used some uh, cardboard to cut out the heavier parts of the wings down on the bottom of the framework and then I made that even stronger with some crumpled foil. I took that outside and was going to be painting that black and found out that my black was all gone by that point and so I didn't get to do that. Uh, I, I will have to finish that up later. I used some hot glue on the frame itself and pressed it into the plastic. If you put this part here of your hot glue gun anywhere near that plastic, it's going to melt. So the only way that it would work is to actually put the glue on the cardboard itself and on the wire and then press the, the plastic onto it. But that worked actually pretty good. I used a, uh, a felt tip pen to make the, the markings on the wings. And there he is. He's all done. Except for that black part, that just really bugs me. I'll use epoxy sculpt to cover the foil and then um, just paint all of that black so it fits in really nice. He might end up on my shelf. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't entirely decided how much I like him or not. And so I know that that, uh, that was really fast. If you have any questions at all about it, um, let me know. I might be able to uh, pull out a, a few pictures or something and, and put them on my post out on ultimatepapermache.com. But let me tell you, if you actually want to make a mask, don't do it like this. I was experimenting. I was just designing as I went a little at a time, changing my mind at least 15 times on every single part of it. And if I started it now, it would not be done in time for Halloween. So if you want a bug for your Halloween mask, get one like this. <laughs> this is a bug too. And it's in my mask book, How to Make Masks. Uh, it's an awful lot easier. This uses just a few layers of blue shop towels and some fast setting paste. You can get it done in three days and it looks really pretty. Let me show you. I would not mind wearing this to answer the doorbell when tiny little kids come <laughs> for their trick or treat. Um, this one, I, I don't think so. A little two year old, that's, that's just going to be too scary. <laughs> but it was kind of fun to make anyway. Weird, creepy, but I, I, I really did kind of have fun. Back to more normal things though next time. I haven't decided what I'm going to do next. Um, I'm right in the middle of a book. I'm, I'm coming really, really close to having the first draft done talking about the tiny and small houses that I've lived in. Uh, I know the tiny house movement is really big right now. A lot of people think you have to put them on wheels. <laughs> and all of the houses that I've lived in have been really small and no wheels. <laughs> They're perfectly legal. So I'm writing a book about that. And that's why this, that's one of the reasons why this is taking so long. So <clears throat> that's it for today. Like I said, if you want to make a bug, make one like this instead. Come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.